yep, perfect. Okay, thank you so much, Maggie, for that wonderful introduction. And I'd like to start now, so. <laughs> I was not expecting that poem, so my head's in a little bit of a spin now. I don't know whose job that was, but they clearly failed. <laughs> I'm blaming mom. Yeah, um, I'll take it. Okay, so. The biggest thing that normally surprises people whenever I tell that story is the fact that at the end, I say oftentimes that I would not take sight back if it was given to me. This seems like an insane idea to most people because sight is an integral part of a lot of people's lives, right? It affects how you live every day of your life. But sight loss has accomplished a lot in my life and has changed who I am, how I think, and the way that I see the world. This is an opportunity that I would not give up for anything else in the world. Vision loss has taught me that life is fragile and capricious. You cannot control what life does to you, but you can only control your mindset, the way that you view the world, and the way that you act. This vision loss and trauma that surrounded it taught me that your mindset controls how you act and who you are. I learned that there are five key things to your mindset that can help you grow through any piece of trauma. Most people have heard of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. I like to think about trauma in a different way, through post-traumatic growth. When you have a traumatic situation happen to you, you choose two roads. There are two roads you can choose from. There is the road of being defeated and there's the road of triumphing through your trauma. And there are five things that can help you with that. There is self-determinants, which is that you choose which road you take and that you choose your mindset. The second is courage. You need courage and you need to tell yourself that you are courageous in order to get through these kind of scenarios. There are many specifics with the blind life that take a lot of courage. Mainly, this one right here. This white cane tells everyone in the world that I am blind. I am disabled, I am a special case, an abnormality, I am different than all of you. That's a big thing to accept in your life. It took a lot of courage. Then there's positivity. Without positivity, you can accomplish pretty much nothing. If you're negative about things, you attract negative things to yourself. Right intentions, as we were talking about earlier. As well, there is empathy. Trauma taught me empathy. It taught me that there are other people who have struggles and that not everyone is as well off as you. I was a very arrogant and commanding person, free vision loss. Personally would not have liked myself if I met myself now, back then, but I've learned so much through empathy. I went through a lot post vision loss. I was admitted to the hospital as some of the poem depicted and there I saw people at the worst point in their lives. And I saw the hope and the love that people had for each other, even in their darkest hours. The next thing that vision loss has taught me was mindfulness, being present in the moment. I cannot see, oftentimes, right, anything. So I still have a little bit of vision left, but it's not very useful. This causes me to not be able to sit there distracted on my phone or looking up a light or reading whatever's on a poster. I have to listen to what people are saying. I have to be present in the moment, not only so that I can properly understand a conversation, but also so that I can just survive, right? I don't have the luxury that most of you do about being able to walk down the street and see when there's an obstacle in front of you. I have to be present and mindful of the fact my surroundings, and who I'm with, what's going on, everything like that. It gets dangerous otherwise. The last thing that this taught me was, wait, no, never mind, went through the five. Sorry about that, <laughs> lost track. Again, mind in a spin. Um, okay, so how did vision loss teach me these things? Trauma all started in the beginning of grade nine. A lot of people think of high school as their best years. I don't know about that, but, um, I started off grade nine at a pretty low point in my life. The past few years, I have recently moved to a new part of um, Ontario, out in the end, and I changed my friend group, obviously. I could not hang out with people I used to in Kingston, where I used to live, this is my old town. And so I decided for some reason, that instead of saying it's true to who I was, I was going to try and hang out with the cool crowd, the popular kids, the kids who were a little dangerous, a little bad. 
So that wasn't me though, so I had to fake who I was. I was the kind of kid who was taking the extracurricular high school math in grade five. Like, I loved school, I loved education. Whenever I moved here, uh, whenever I moved to um, Winchester and decided to start hanging out with the cool kids, I forgot about education, stopped caring about my life, pushed my family away from me, and embraced a bunch of teenage idiots, in a sense, just because they were seen as cool by everyone else. That did not help my life in any way, and I think that a big part of why vision loss occurred for me was because life wanted to teach me a lesson. It wanted to show me the right track and show me the fact that life is not about partying or doing stupid things. It's about living to be your best self. It's about growing through experiences and adapting to the things that life throws at you. I could not be the person that I am, and I am 100% certain of that, if vision loss did not occur to me. So, in the beginning of grade nine, when the vision loss started to go, I was scared. There was tons of fear. Everything was scared. I couldn't do school anymore, which, despite the fact that I had given up on education, I didn't really feel like failing every class, because, you know, grade nine for the rest of my life, not a, not a fun experience. But the school, they couldn't help me. I was on my own, okay? Independence was something that was taken from me, but then I was asked to be independent and to figure out how to deal with blindness, especially before I was admitted to the hospital. I had no diagnosis. I went to the doctors. They said, your eyes look fine. We don't know what you're talking about, to be honest, but we'll continue some tests just to check it out. So, I guess I can't see now properly. I, I refused to use the cane at that point in time. I, I didn't even think of myself as blind because, well, why would I? I was just told I couldn't see very well and I didn't know why. So I got, I got even angrier, even more aggressive, even more commanding than I had already been. I, I'm, a, I'm a high C, so a lot of D in me too. I was very out of control before vision loss happened. I was cold, aggressive, dominant, commanding, all those kind of nasty traits. <laughs> that was not, wasn't a good part of my life. I was mean to even the friends who I thought that I was close to. Vision loss furthered this up until my hospital stay. I went through all of these traumatic experiences in the hospital, and it taught me the, that two roads that I was talking about, that there was only one option in my life now. I was not gonna be defeated by this new found experience, this new found difficulty, this disability. I was gonna triumph through it. I was gonna triumph through life in general. Something that I had lost my hope for was just generally my future. I, I cared to live in the moment for the immediate pleasure, not for the long goals or whatever. I, I didn't really care about what would happen a year, two years, three years, 10 years from now. Vision loss taught me not necessarily to have far off goals, but to look at everything with a I can do this attitude, a self determinants. I determine within the confines of my circumstance what I can do and who I can be. This showed me that even though I may not be able to see, what do I still have? I have my brain. I may be physically disabled, physically handicapped. Now, whichever word you want to use, I don't like any of them, to be honest. I just use visually impaired or blind. And those other words, they have too many stigmas with them. I have my mind. I could focus on educating myself. I could focus on being the best person I was. And I could focus on my mindset in the moment which is where the other elements came into play. I went from being the kind of person who didn't care about education to the semester after getting out of the hospital, pulling off, I think it was like a 93, 94 average, which is pretty good, I'd say, you know, A's. <laughs> <laughs> but that was not through relaxing, sitting on my butt, doing nothing and saying, oh, poor me, vision loss happened, what am I gonna do, my life's over. I did that by saying, I will not let this drag me down. I choose who I am, and I choose what I do. I recently read Man's Search for Meaning. I've heard this is a book that some people at Exit like. Mm -hmm. But I feel a lot of what's talked about there, I, I came to through my vision loss. Vision loss taught me to find a meaning through my suffering, to find a meaning for my life to give myself happiness. And that's self determinants that's how Frankel puts it in the book Man's Search for Meaning. Right. You determine who you are and what you think and how you act and how you take the suffering that's handed to you. 
I took the suffering of vision loss and decided to let it change me for the better, to let me grow, to put me on the up. Man, how that changed my life. I went from not caring about anything to analyzing every piece of who I was. I, before I didn't really do self-reflection, afterwards, I spent time looking at the way that I behaved. I realized I, I was mean to a lot of people around me, cared mostly about myself, I was a little greedy too, that kind of thing. Throughout my whole life, it, it changed the way that my relationship with my family worked. I realized I, I pushed them out of my life for no real reason. That, uh, this new reflection in my life allowed me to change who I was. Because before you can change who you are, you have to realize who you are now, right? Exactly. So, this self-determinant changed who I was because I now knew that I controlled that. Nobody else can control who I am except me. There are some confines to my circumstance now. I can't go and say, I want to be the world's best NASCAR driver, or I want to go be a pilot, but do I really care? No, those are the cards that life dealt me. I'm going to take those cards, I'm going to play the best damn game I can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, through vision loss, I also learned that you have to help yourself. I looked at school, and they recently had a new what they call vision resource teachers or vision itinerants. They're people who are hired by the school board to come and teach visually impaired kids how to do schoolwork and how to live their lives. My school board had a brand new vision itinerant who could barely teach me anything and Bureaucracy is bureaucracy, so everything took forever to come in. So I was told, just do work. Like, just, just kind of figure it out. You want to be able to find somebody to scribe for you every once in a while. If anyone's ever tried it, scribing, which is where somebody else writes down for you as you're speaking, awful. It, it sucks. <laughs> Ruins your mental flow. Because you can't backspace as easily, right? You can't erase what you were doing as easily. And you feel like the person on the other end, they're, they're thinking about what you're doing. They may judge you, right? It's, it's a total... Um, it's a weird stigma, but I just, I really don't like it. So I need, I want to find a way for myself to accomplish things, to do it without other people having to do it for me. So I went and I scoured the internet. I, that was what I had. I, you know, I'm a young guy. We're obsessed with the internet, obsessed with our phones. I was always on Instagram and Snapchat beforehand. So I went to the kind of places that I am now, the internet, Googled some stuff, Googled how blind people interacted with the world, how they survived, how they did work, what kind of jobs they did. And I learned there's actually a pretty big industry that sells assistive devices, which is technology that helps blind people interact with the world. So this is technically an assistive device, probably the oldest one that exists, but there's much more advanced ones, like screen readers for computers, which allows you to turn the screen off and it does everything auditorily. There's big digital magnifiers, physical magnifiers, all sorts of things, a whole variety of ways to adapt to the world that can match your specific circumstance and your specific vision loss. Because most vision loss is not the same. There's so many conditions, there's so many different kinds, and most blind people aren't fully blind. 90% of us have some vision left. Whether that's usable vision or not, it's still there. So, you can capitalize on that with these mega cards, also things like that. So I learned about all these things, and then I realized the industry is a huge scam. <laughs> They, they sell these things at an insane upcharge, like thousands to tens of thousands of dollars for each item. I, I didn't really know how to pay for that, that's why I assumed the school was rigged. But when they were too slow, I decided, there's ways to do this, let's use the internet again. Again, Gen Z I am, use the internet for everything. So I went and found a way to pick up a little bit of cash, started a, started a GoFundMe, wrote out my story, threw on some pictures, and shared a bunch on Facebook, told some people at school, just asked for little, little chip things, you know? Any, anything could help. I ended up raising, what was it, like over $17,000 within two weeks? It was something insane. Got everything I could ever want to help myself um, adapt to my new circumstances. And I did this because I was confident in who I am and decided that I would not let it pull me down. And nobody else decided, oh, Ethan, you have to go find assistive devices on the internet. You have to figure out how to adapt to life. I chose that, it was my mindset. I decided vision loss would not take me over. This may seem like, oh, what, what's this guy talking about? I, I'm not gonna lose my vision, maybe I will when I'm 90, but why, why do I need to know how vision loss is good for me? Because it's probably not. What's important here is the mindset. 
anything anyone is going through right now, any piece of trauma, you know, whatever, a, a breakup, uh, something's going wrong with your finances, anything, you gotta look at it with the right mindset. If you are self-determined and decide, I will get through this, I don't know how quite yet, but I will find that way to get through this, you can do anything. Anything can be accomplished. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm standing up here presenting to you guys. I'm 16 years old. Well, why do you have anything to gain from me? Because I decided that I wouldn't let the world take me down. That comes into courage, right? I, I have to have some courage to get up here, talk, share my story. It's a big part of who I am now. The courage to tell people I'm blind, the courage to not let disability drag me down. I go around in my school, in my community, carrying around the white cane. People make fun of it sometimes, sometimes people are a little mean with it. I've had kids at school honestly, like just give it up, who, oh, miss, see, it's blind. Proved it. <laughs> any, any one thing I'm faking now? No, that's good. I'd be a little mad if you were. Then, then you get an ankle whack. That's another good thing this is for, but don't tell, don't tell my own M instructor that. That's more interior new mobility. They're going to teach you how to use it. So against the rules, very badly. <laughs> but I have people treat me like a little bit like an outsider at school, for sure. But I still have the courage to walk around with the cane. I didn't give it up because I knew that I am a blind person. And why be afraid of that? Why, why let that take you down? You have to have the courage to you know, get up every day, stand up tall. <sighs> I'm going to handle the world. Right? That's it. That's it. That's it. Buddy. You, man. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Okay, so that can be taken in anything. You go into life courageously. People take you more seriously. They think you're more mature. They think you, you might even be better than you are, right? They, they look at you completely differently. How would you guys think of me if I walked up here and was like, hi, my name is Ethan Cook. I can't talk about being blind. Uh, uh, uh. Like, you think I'm a fool, right? But because I'm up here confidently talking, you probably respect me a little bit more, take me a little more seriously, you're listening to me. I could not be where I am without confidence. The confidence to help myself, the confidence to talk about my emotions, to talk about where I am, the confidence to make connections, and the confidence to determine my own world. So, empathy, I'm gonna talk about that one next. <laughs> empathy was taught to me in a variety of scenarios. Previously, I wasn't a very empathetic person. My mom could confirm that. Um, but specifically, my stay in the hospital. That showed me the darkest depths of people's lives. People were in there for the worst reasons, right? You know, your kid's sick, you're there suffering with them, something happened to you, an injury, you know, some genetic condition, whatever. And I saw that other people could be positive through things, people who saw the worst every day, hospital staff, they can still be positive. People who are in the hospital, they can still be positive. So why can't I? Why can't I do something like that? Why, why do all these people have so much love in their life? And why are they so great to other people when all they see is bad things? There's gotta be something there. It's, and it's a big deal as well in my personal life now. I have a lot of people who I was in a great relationship good empathetical relationship where I thought about how they were doing, they thought about how I was doing, we were thoughtful of each other. You know, it was a good quality, healthy relationship. Through vision loss, I learned I need a support network. There's, nobody can operate completely by themselves. Even though you can determine your own will, you need to find other people to help you do things. You need to find the people to pick you up when you are on the ground, right? Or else you'll just stay on the ground. You can eventually pick yourself up. It takes way longer, I can tell you that. When you embrace the people around you, and decide that they can help you just as much as you can help yourself, your life changes. Take the opportunities that are given to you in that sense. My mom and I, previously, our, our relationship was rocky for a long time. 10 years plus, <laughs> however you wanna put it. You know, we didn't get along. I, I, was, I was not a nice person to her though. I know rebellious teenager, 14 year old. Oh, mom, I don't have to listen to you. After vision loss, I learned that there is one person who will be there for me forever. My mom. Yeah. My siblings, too. Many of my family members, many of the people around me. I learned who the good friends that I had were and who the bad friends were. 
I learned what my social support network should be. <laughs> I, I've been taking a, a health class the past few days in my new semester, and we're talking about healthy relationships and your social support network. It's a weird coincidence that yeah. mm. turns out other people think that way too. <laughs> um, so I learned that I need to surround myself with good people, not people who are going to drag me down, make fun of me for being blind, tell me to just get better, get, tell me to do things, or they just uh, ditch me, leave me alone. I need to surround myself with the people who make me feel the best about myself and who I feel I can make them feel the best of themselves. That requires sometimes a big change in your life. I, I recently um, had switched schools about a year ago. This time, I changed schools because I felt like my current scenario in my school, I went to a really tiny country high school, you know, one of those county roads that's off the beaten path. So there's not a lot of kids there. So whenever I change who I am, Everybody else still goes, hey, that's Ethan Cook, you know, he's, he's a party guy, he, he hangs out with the idiots, they do stupid things, they like to break the rules, you know? So, I couldn't be taken seriously by the people around me, except for a very select few, but they still had those preconceptions, you know, and it's not like I hate all of them, it's not like I never talk to anyone, I still talk to people, for sure, in there, but I've changed so much, and I can't expect them to change. I decided to surround myself with positive and uplifting people, and in order to do that, I changed my circumstance, I changed where I was, and determined that that would be the best thing for me. I determined that my future would be brighter if I could change the people who I surround myself with. I now go to a new school. Um, it had many other benefits, including better resourcing, stuff like that. But the main thing that it's helped is I'm in a positive environment now. There's people constantly around me bringing me up. Fellow students like to up be uplifting, you know, they're positive. It's good like that, because those are the people who I've attracted. I decided I was gonna be positive about things in my life. I was going to talk about vision loss positively. I was going to look every day in the eye and say, I will be positive today. I'm going to look at every piece of today and try not to be negative. And I cannot accomplish that every day. It's a goal that I fail most days, not going to lie. But if I start that day saying, I'm going to be positive, one day I will stop being negative. <laughs> I can continue to say that vision loss is great. Vision loss is amazing. It's, it's really not, you know. I can't see, I, I can't do a lot of things, there's, there's less that I'm capable of. But if I remain positive and tell myself that there's more I'm capable of now, it'll, it'll happen. I, I've determined that that's how it's going to happen and so I, I won't let anything else happen. I'm going to take everything positively. So in your circumstances, anybody here who's going through anything, look at it positively. See how this can help me grow. How can this change me for the better? Don't look at, oh, the next few days, the next few months are gonna be really awful because of this. If you tell yourself, this will make me grow to be a better person. This will change the way that I think about things. This will make me closer with this person. This will drop some negativity out of my life when it's done. I'll be in a better place when it's over. A year, two years, three years, you'll be in that better place. <sighs> Need to take a breath. Okay, so. That is a really big part of my life now. I have completely changed who I am for this. If vision loss was not a piece of my life, I wouldn't have these things. But also, why don't I want my sight back then? Because I went through this. I should have that experience under my belt, you know? I, I should be able to take those lessons and apply them to a sighted life. So why don't I ask for the vision back? That's a, an interesting question. A lot of people ask that because it's, it's very confusing. Why would you want a disability? Why do you want a handicap? Why do you not want to be capable of something? It's not a one-time lesson. It's not like they put you into kindergarten and say, okay, here's what critical thinking is, here's how you learn about something, and uh, okay, senior kindergarten is done, boop, off into the world. It's an everyday learning experience. Vision loss teaches me something new about life all the time. Every day I have to take these same mindsets and remind myself what's good about my life, what I can do to make it better, and what my future is going to be like. So if vision loss was taken, like, sorry, if vision was given back to me right now, I'm not saying I'd revert back to the person I was before fully, but I wouldn't have the same growth opportunities. Plus, what would I have to talk about? My public speaking career would be over, so you know. <laughs> that, exactly, yeah. Was, opportunities would be closed, yeah, I don't want that. And I, I honestly, there's lots of people who are successful in life who have vision loss. Like, for instance, there's um, blind lawyers, blind politicians, blind scientists, like high class professionals, blind real estate agents. I, I know there is some, I've seen them on the internet. Um, 
Well, not seen. Well, read about them. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's another thing okay, right now in my life. I decided that instead of just letting the education system educate me and then sitting on my butt and do nothing, feeling bad about myself, I was also going to educate myself about the world. I have a lot of free time now because, well, there's certain things I couldn't do anymore. I used to spend a lot of time skateboarding. So it's very dangerous to skateboard blind. There are people who do it, but they are crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but they are crazy. Like, they'll, they'll carry around one of these on a skateboard. That is a, a disaster waiting to happen, and I'd rather have my life than skateboarding. <laughs> so I spend the time that you spend skateboarding, you know, listening to audiobooks. And I can do other things while listening to the audiobooks, right? Exercising, as Dom talked about. They're great. Podcasts, audiobooks, they're great for all sorts of things. And so I went from being the kind of guy in like grade four or five who read books every night, all the time. I loved to read. It was amazing. And then six, seven, eight, nine, stopped reading almost completely. I read like the two books that English class made you read, maybe. You know, maybe I wouldn't read them and just look up the Sparks Notes summary just so I could pass the class. That's not the best way to handle life, but I, I wasn't very smart at that point. I now try and read, you know, three, four books a month at least, get lots of information into me, and a brilliant thing is audiobooks, you can speed them up. And that's a, a great thing about being blind is your ears, they don't get better. Like, it's not like the physical anatomy of your ears change at all, but it's about focus. I can't focus on visual things anymore, so I focus on the auditory elements of life. That allows me to train myself to listen to things faster. So I listen to audiobooks two plus times the speed sometimes. Books that would normally take you like six hours, take me two. It's very awesome, actually. It means you can learn a lot faster. And I've got lots and lots to learn. I, I'm only 16, right? Full life's ahead of me. So that's been a, a great bonus in my life, right? I wouldn't have been able to tell you that little bit about man's search for meaning if I hadn't read it. I wouldn't be able to talk the way that I do if I didn't read so much. I, I can use more colorful language now. You know, I said capricious earlier. That was from a book. Um, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Okay, and so, <laughs> I, I've set some pretty, um, some pretty big goals in my life now since losing my vision. Before, I kind of just said uh, I, I want to be maybe like an, an engineer, something with math, because I like math the most. Uh, but I, I had no passion behind it. It's not like I was spending my time outside of school looking into it. Now I have a deep interest in a lot of things. Social sciences are a big one. I like to learn about psychology, philosophy, that kind of thing. Um, I love politics. It gets controversial, so I'm not going to mention anything. But <laughs> I, I just, I'm fascinated by government, legislation, the legal system. I'm kind of bland, right? I sound like an old man, not a 16 year old, but <laughs> give me something to look forward to. And in saying that I want to do some of these things, it opens up connections. There's people who I meet because I have goals, and because I seem like somebody who's got their. Um, I've got my stuff together, it seems like. Uh, it's kind of true, but other people see that and it makes me feel better. So, um, you know, if everybody tells you you've got your stuff together, maybe you'll have your stuff together one day. I don't know, maybe. But in order to get into those kind of education systems that are required to go to those kind of schools, like I, I can't just go and decide I'm a lawyer one day, which is probably my biggest aspiration right now. I can't just decide I'm going to be a lawyer one day because that's not how the world works. I have to go to school, I have to dedicate myself to my education. So in setting these goals, I learned what's important in life, and I set myself to these goals. I now pay much more attention in school than I used to, because I realized the quality education can have in your life. And that's not applicable to many of you, I bet, because most of you are done school, most of you are out here living your professional lives. But you can still educate yourself on all sorts of things. You can read more books, and it doesn't have to be education. Maybe the thing that you decide you want to do is instead of educating yourself, maybe you want to be a nicer person. You decide every day, like tell yourself, I'm going to be a nicer person. I tell myself all the time, I'm going to read four books this month. That was my quota last month. I hit four books by the end of the month because I told myself I would read those four books. I would educate myself on, I set out a list. I would do um, Lord of the Flies again. I do Anne at Home Farm, or not Anne at Home Farm. Sorry, I do 1984, I do Fahrenheit 451, I do Ghost Out Watchmen. I read all of them. And then this month I said I'll do Man's Search for Meaning, blah, blah, blah. If you set out these goals, you'll achieve them because you feel accountable to yourself. And if you're not accountable to yourself, who are you accountable to? It's not like you've got somebody nagging you every day to read your four books or to be a nicer person or to sell more houses or to sell another franchise or what. You have to determine yourself to do that kind of thing. So, vision loss has just changed who I am 
in many ways. Therefore, I don't want it to go away. I don't want that to be a part of my life. If I could talk to myself before vision loss, I won't even tell him it happened. Because if I was expecting it, it might change the way that he did it then. Everything happens for a reason, I believe now. Which sounds a little cheesy and depending. Some people like to word it a little bit differently. Some people love the way that it's worded. I think it's just overused sometimes. But I really do believe that vision loss happened to me for a reason. I was off my path and life had to kind of give me a little, little kick back into where I was supposed to be. I had to find my meaning to my life through some suffering. I needed to turn myself around by figuring out what there was to turn around. Without vision loss, I'd just still be that same arrogant guy. Maybe I'd get into public speaking. You know, I like to speak in front of people beforehand, but it wouldn't be of the same quality. It's not like I had a story to tell before. Vision loss gave me something. It is who I am now. I am a blind person. I am proud of that. And I am proud of the blind community. It's a very tight-knit minority. I, I learned that the blind community loves each other. It's, again, empathy. They're all empathetical of each other's situations because they know what it's like to be in your shoes. Two minutes. Oh, two minutes? Yep. Perfect. Sounds good. Okay. So to wrap things up then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just want to say, again, that the biggest thing in your life that you have is your thoughts and your behavior. Other people control the circumstances in your life, you know? Your genetics, which is what mine was. My parents just happened to me, and the right mix of genes happened. My mom sent down this gene that would make me go blind one day. Right? I couldn't choose that. It was out of my power. But the thing that I could choose was how I acted and how I behaved and how I thought. So, in any of your circumstances, remember the one thing is your thoughts. That is what you have, and that is what you take into the world with you. Thank you for allowing me to speak here, and I uh, hope you all have a great rest of your day.